Hello, my name is Jared Gable with Grunfoss Water Treatment. Today I'm here with my colleague Irwan Mukman, the product manager for our dosing disinfection products in the USA. G'day. And what we're going to do today is learn how to physically install the DID system, the sensors, load the sensor to the parameter menu, and then navigate through the top level menu structure. Irwan, what do you say we take a look at what comes in the box when we first receive it? Yes. So when you open the package for the first time, you're going to see the DID instruction manual, a box which contains the sensor and the electrolyte. The box over here contains the sensor cables and the connection pieces for the inlet and outlets. All right. And then lastly, we have the pre-assembled DID system. Okay. So at the top here, we have the CU382 controller as well as our hydraulic assembly and the flow cell. To remove the terminal cover, we'll just use one of our flathead screwdrivers. And remove the two screws. And you'll notice on the back side of the terminal cover, we have the wiring diagram. For the terminals. Use ferrules and a crimper. This makes it easier to slide the leads into the different terminals. And this is one of the spring-loaded style terminal strips, so it takes a little tension up in there with the small electrical screwdriver to make the connection. Okay, your one. Tell me about some of the considerations that we need to think of when we're trying to mount the DID system. Sure. It is important to mount the DID in a location so you can view the screen and access the interface. Okay. And this includes the USB port where you can upload the software updates and obtain the, the data. And after you decide where to mount the DID, we recommend using a spacer in between the back panel and the wall. And this will allow you to pass okay. the cables through the opening in the panel. And it will simply hide your wires and give your system a cleaner look. And uh, once you've mounted the DID, we can go ahead and plug in the power cable. Okay, so we have the unit plugged in and turned on. It's powered up. What are some of the inlet and outlet conditions that need to be met uh, to make sure that we get accurate readings with the DID system? Yeah, yes. So. To do that, we'll have to remove the plugs from the inlet and the outlet of the hydraulic assembly. So we're going to need uh, the tool to remove those. Okay. And I have a, a 10 millimeter Allen hex head. And so I just need to slide it in here, right? That's correct. Okay. Looks like once I get it loosened, it's easy to just remove by hand. Yep, once you loosen it a little bit, then yeah, you can do mm -hmm. the rest by hand. And the same for the out outlet, correct? That's okay. correct. Got it. All right, we got the plugs removed. Now we need to install the connector pieces. How does that work? So the DID system comes with the pieces to connect the inlet and outlet. So I have uh, the pieces up here, which you and can help me with. Fantastic. So the first step is to install the threaded nipples, which are half inch. Okay. And you want to install the side with the O-rings um, facing downwards. Okay. Next, we have the union and cone pieces, which we will put on now. And the system comes with uh, the connectors for three different tubing sizes, and that is a quarter inch, Three eighths of an inch and half inch. Okay. And let's put them in. I'll let you put that one in here. All right. Yeah, I'm familiar with these. These are the same uh, connector pieces that come with the dosing pumps. So. Yep. Exactly. Makes the same. it easy. Great. Yes. So I'll I'll just go ahead and connect this one without tubing for the demo's sake. Yes. And I have here the tubing piece and the T connector here for the discharge line. Tell me about that. Why do you have a T-piece in this particular case on the discharge side? So you want the T-piece 
um, essentially to prevent siphoning the flow cell and make sure that it's full of water. And this will allow you to have accurate sensor readings when you're operating the system. I, I suppose that if you didn't and you took this discharge straight down to drain, you could end up just siphoning the water, the sample water clean out of there, and then we would leave our sensor dry in that case, which we don't want that, right? Exactly. That's okay. not good. Okay. That's not good. Yeah. So it'll look something like this. I'm looking at this DID system as it is now, and I notice that there's some markings on it, some labels. Can you walk me through what these labels mean, and should I even pay attention to them? Absolutely. Um, to answer the last question, yes, you should pay attention okay. to them. Uh, let's start with the flow and pressure limitations down the bottom here. Next, we have the labels, uh, which indicate to keep the system um, sheltered from the elements, so out of direct sunlight, okay. and you don't want any rain or precipitation yep. or liquids you know, getting onto the system. Uh, the next label here uh, indicates to keep the sensor uh, immersed in the flow cell or keep it wetted at all times. Okay. And the next is uh, regarding the discharge line to make sure that it has the upward bend and the T connection there to prevent siphoning and keep the flow cell full of water. And lastly, we want to make sure that our system is plugged in when we have the sensor installed. The next step is to prepare the sensor. If it's a disinfection sensor, you'll need to fill the sensor cap with the electrolyte that came with the sensor. Each disinfection sensor type has a specific electrolyte. Let's see how we will fill the electrolyte. First, we will remove the rubber band that covers the weep hole on the cap. We will start by squeezing out the electrolyte onto the table and then drag it into the cap until it is full. As you can see here, our goal is to not introduce air bubbles into the cap. Once full, slowly screw the cap on the sensor without touching the sensor tip with your finger. You'll notice electrolyte will leak out the threading and through the weep hole. Simply wipe off any excess electrolyte and recover the weep hole with a rubber band. Your sensor is now ready to be installed in the flow cell. We just filled our sensor with electrolyte. Now we're ready to install it into the DID flow cell. Irwan, I'd love to install this sensor into the flow cell right now, but I can see there's a cap in the way or some obstruction. Can you tell me what I need to do in order to physically install this into my DID system? Sure. So before installing the sensor, uh, you need to remove the plug that's on the flow cell here. So we take this U-clip, like so, and then we use one of the ends, insert it into the hole to pry, uh, pry up the plug. I can see that it just kind of pops up and I can just grab it now, right? Exactly, so you can take that off. Okay. Okay. We'll set that aside. And I see you have the sensor in your hand there now. All right, should I try to install it? Sure. Okay. So you want to pop okay. it in there. So is it, did I do it right? So you want to um, push it down and give it a slight twist and okay. you'll hear a click. I'll like, let me try that. Yep. Oh, I heard it and felt it. Okay. Excellent. And I'll let you put the clip in. Great. Once you put the clip in, then you know you've installed the sensor correctly. Oh yeah, it slid in really easily. Good job. It's probably why I had to push it down a little farther. Yeah. Okay. So now what do I do? I've got the sensor in but it looks like it's not going to be able to communicate this time to the DID. Is there something I'm missing? That's right. So we need to uh, use the cable to connect the sensor to the controller. And I have the cable right here. Very good. Okay. So there are obviously two ends to the cable, and they come with specific female and male connections. Okay. So you can't get this step wrong. Oh, good. So first we'll remove the caps. Um, cap from the sensor. I'll go ahead and do this one. It looks like another similar cap on the DID controller as well. If you have a system with three ports, it doesn't matter where each sensor is plugged in because the controller will recognize the sensor profile when you go through the next step of loading the sensor. So now we have the sensor connected to the controller. Now that we have the sensor installed, how do I get it to start communicating with the DID controller? So let me give you an overview of the different screens on the DID controller 
and how to load the sensor. So the first screen that will show is the parameter screen, but as you can see, there's no parameter shown. So you want to go to the status screen, click on the left arrow, and we want to hit the bullseye button, manage sensors, and hit OK, add sensor. Here we have three options for analog uh, input signal, a digital input, and the SCAN sensor. So let's go and click the SCAN sensor. And now it's going to search for predefined addresses on the system. Now that the controller has identified the sensor, we can hit OK. And now we want to add the parameter uh, of the sensor to the, the screen. So now we have to hit return. We select up and hit OK on the sensor. Select down to add parameter. Here we can add free chlorine and also temperature, which is included with the same sensor. And we hit return, return again. Now if we hit right from the status screen, we can see on our parameter screen the chlorine and temperature measurements. We have now completed our setup of the DID.